Woman is locked up in virtual prison, where there are neither guards nor cellmates, no one to talk to at all. Even if she wants to commit suicide, there's no way to do it. Moreover, a year in this prison is equivalent to only a minute or so in reality, and a sentence of several hundred years is perfectly realizable. To enter the virtual prison, all you need to do is put a drop of medicine into your eyes. The first one to enter the virtual prison is Ren. As soon as she enters, she begins to observe the room. The hollowed out floor is used to keep the air circulating. There's a writing pad on the floor to pass the time. There's drinking water through a window on the wall, a wide variety of food, and even a full set of toiletries. Prison life wasn't so bad after all. Ren adjusted her mindset and accepted her situation. She started exercising in her room, then numbing herself with food. And when she was bored, she wrote in her diary on her writing pad. But when she thought about her current situation, Ren's emotions flared up. It has everything it needs, but it's also full of despair. The writing pad was thrown aside, and Ren lay down on the floor. The first day passing by, I the next day, everything in the virtual prison had been reset. The writing pad was put aside and the food was restored to its original position. Rain gave up her struggle and thought back to her boyfriend. Rain is the creator of the virtual world. She started a company with her partner, but she violated the rules by letting boyfriend experience the virtual technology, which cost him his life. Rain was supposed to go to jail, but the Justice Department said they wouldn't prosecute her any further if she would spend a year in virtual prison. Ren had no choice but to give in, but she didn't realize how hard it would be in virtual prison. After only one day, she couldn't take it anymore. In the days that followed, Ren began to review the virtual technology and imagine someone talking to her in her head. She used all sorts of methods to keep herself from having a nervous breakdown. Day after day, Ren finally reached the 365th day and stood in front of the time screen waiting for the nightmare to end. But then the time reset when it should have ended. Ren finally exploded, smashing everything in the room, until she collapsed on the floor with her last ounce of strength. When she sat her day up again, a breeze came from the closed room. The woman had been locked up in a virtual prison for a year and had never seen another human being. The sealed cell prevented her from seeing a single ray of sunlight. When she finally waited for her release, the program malfunctioned. She breaks down and smashes everything in her room, but accidentally creates a gap in the window where she keeps her supplies. Ren follows the gap and opens the bars. When she gets outside, she realizes that the virtual prison she's been in for a year is a very simple tin box. She found a room full of food for the year. She walks into the side room where a downscene security cameras have been watching her life in prison. Ren realizes that it was all a scam by partner. She'd actually spent 365 days in jail. When the security guard spotted her, Ren grabbed a car and got out of there. When she came back to the office, it had been cleared out. Partner took all the research data. Ren went to the police to file a report, but the system said she was listed as a missing person. For a year, no one knew where she was. She takes the police to where she's being held, but the house has been raised. She had to go back to her apartment, but was told it had been rented out. Ren finds a former co-worker to help her. The fried rice bought by her co-worker is very tasty to Ren, who has been eating canned food and cookies for a year. Then the co-worker revealed the shocking news that Ren's boyfriend was not dead. In that evening, she met her boyfriend and learned the whole story. Since her incarceration, partner has taken over the company and used the virtual technology in many illegal ways. But Ren doesn't care about the company. She just wants the data back. Her focus on virtualization is to save her brother from drowning and becoming brain dead. With the help of her co-workers and boyfriend, Ren was able to retrieve the data. She used the program she came up with during her imprisonment to perfect the virtual technology. She went to her brother's hospital bed and put drops into his eyes. Not long after, her brother woke up miraculously after years of sleep. But before Ren could be happy, her brother's body began to tremble. His brother didn't come out of the virtual world. He was still suffering in the sea. Looking at his brother's painful appearance, Ren had to unplug the ventilator to put him out of his misery. At this time, partner came to the hospital room. He told Ren that with the virtual world, no one is willing to face reality. Ren is in a trance and starts to see strange images in his head. In the images, there are many people calling out to Ren, all of them telling Ren to wake up, and then someone wants to give Ren an injection to wake him up. If the virtual world really exists, how would it be possible to distinguish her from reality? A woman was locked up in a virtual prison for 365 days. On the day of her release, 
She thought the system was malfunctioning, but it turns out it was all a plot by the partners. She realizes she's still in the virtual world when she sees her brother pass out in front of her again. And in the end, her co-workers used an injection to bring her back to reality. She's been in the virtual world for over a year, but only a few minutes have passed in the real world. Ren had never felt this kind of fear before. She woke up and punched her partner. Then she went crazy and smashed the equipment around her. And it took a long time for her to calm down a little. She recalled all her experiences in the virtual world as if they were real. It was horrible that she, the developer of the virtual world, couldn't tell the difference between the virtual and the real. Ren approached partner and told him that she wanted to take away the patents for the virtual technology. Partner was confused. He didn't know what Ren experienced and Ren didn't tell her. Then Ren goes to her boyfriend's funeral, but in reality, he's still dead. Partner didn't give up. One day, he lured Ren back to the lab because he found out that Ren had done a prison break in the virtual world. She was able to change the program she had already written. Partner wanted to develop the technology, but Ren rejected his request. She never wanted to go back to that place, and Partner was no longer gin with her. He forced a drop into Ren's eye when she wasn't looking. A few moments later, Ren was back in the virtual prison, but with her previous experience, Ren quickly calmed down. She used her strong consciousness to forcefully disrupt the virtual world's operation program. This time, she quickly returned to reality. She got up and pushed Partner to the ground, then smeared a handful of potion into his eyes. She wanted Partner to feel the despair of the virtual world for himself. Partner came to the virtual prison, where he also had to stay for 365 days. But his willpower is not as strong as Ren's, and it doesn't take long before his spirit can't take it anymore. When the time is up, Ren injects him with a wake-up call. When he woke up, Partner was full of fear. Only if he experiences it for himself will he realize how desperate it is. After this experience, Partner stopped talking about virtual technology. In the end, Ren accepts the fact that he can't wake up his brother. The movie ends here. Nowadays, technology is advancing rapidly, and virtual technology is becoming more and more mature. If virtual technology really reaches the level of the movie, what would you do with it? See you next time.